So they were trying to get out from the area of the party, and then there were alarms and there were missiles, and they went into a shelter. He was with his friend, Hirsch Goldberg, um, but there were um, about 30 other people there. Um, first of all, he calmed them down. He said the army was only half an hour away, and he was sure that everything was going to be okay. And so we know everybody was grateful that there is something who takes leadership, because he was a natural leader, wherever he was. And then when the terrorists came nearer, um, he stood at the entrance. And when they started throwing grenades into the shelter, um, he said, I'm going to throw them back. And if, if I miss one, you do the rest of the work. And he just stood there, and he threw back one grenade after the other, from what his friends told us. Um, he managed to throw back about seven grenades, and then the last one exploded in his hands. And you must be very proud, in a sense, of what he did. Um, people have been saying that he saved our lives. Yeah. Um, the first day, we didn't, we didn't know anything. We were just looking for, for him at hospitals. We thought perhaps he was wounded. We didn't know about his heroic, empty-handed battle against the terrorists. But uh, on the third day, on Monday, uh, people who survived the attack started calling us. It took them time to find out who he was, who his family was. They started calling, and one after the other said, he saved our lives, and they told us a story of how he stood there. And um, you must see, after apparently he collapsed, died, I hope he didn't suffer much, um, the terrorists went back in. They took five or six hostages, one of them Aner's friend with whom he came to the party, Hirsch Goldberg put them on a car, took them to Gaza, apparently. Um, then, before they left, they went into the shelter again, shot everybody that they could shoot. Um, miraculously, a few people survived, but only those who were not injured severely, so only moderately injured, because it took hours before any help arrived. I mean, it's just the most awful um, thing for you and the family. Just tell us about him, a little bit about him. Well, first of all, you can see the good-natured smile on his face, extremely handsome, good-natured, um, gifted in all areas, in all Painter. kinds of areas. He, 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 yeah, he painted very well. Um, he played the piano until he was 18, until he finished high school. Then he became more interested in pop music, spoken word music, and wrote hundreds of texts, spoken word texts, some of them. He also composed music. Are you shocked that this could happen in a country where security is so important? I'm shocked. I think everybody is shocked. And um, it reminds me of the Yom Kippur War and to make the same mistake after 50 years, not being ready, is a terrible thing. But in Yom Kippur, we pulled ourselves together and that's what we're going to do now. And his friend is now a hostage. Uh, you're pretty certain about that. Um, what are your thoughts about the hostages and, and what should happen in terms of trying to get them out? Well, we hope that they are given medical help because we know Hirsch Goldberg was injured in this attack and many others were injured and there are children there. So first of all, we hope they are kept, they are given medical help and they are kept under good conditions. And um, it might be reasonable for the Hamas to do so, because there's going to be negotiations. And of course, we hope that these negotiations are successful and we're going to see them back. Some have come out. And even, some have come out. And even if the price is high, I think Israel 
has always been willing to pay a high price for its citizens and for its soldiers. Just finally, um, how worried are you about the coming days and weeks and months here? I'm worried because we know very little and it might be only the beginning of a bigger event um, that extends beyond the borders of Israel. But what I'm really worried about is that for many years now we thought that we have a local conflict with the Palestinians that is soluble, we thought, and that we can come to an agreement. But now I think what appears to happen is that there's not really a recognition in the area and also in some countries that are further away, that there's not really a recognition in the right of Israel to exist. And this is something that is shocking to us because we thought that's already a fact, that already has been recognized and now we're only talking about the borders. And but no, it has not been recognized, so Israel is now fighting for its very existence. Okay, Yamima, thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you. Thank you.